Welcome to Military Analytics. The war between Ukraine and Russia has started to stir up again. Kiev's major offensive plans have taken hold of the eastern Ukrainian front lines within the scope of this plan. The Ukrainian armed forces blockaded the city of Bamut, the hottest trench of the eastern front. Even now, hundreds of thousands of soldiers are fighting on the alert for victory in Bamut. It is known that about 120,000 soldiers constantly circulate the Bamut trenches from the Ukrainian side. In addition to this huge number, the Ukrainian army is trying to besiege the city of Bamut with its special units such as the Azov Regiment and the 93rd Mechanized Brigade. But the siege attempts of the Ukrainians are much different than usual. We are currently witnessing one of the most effective plans of the Ukrainians in Bamut since the beginning of the war. The Ukrainian forces, advancing, according to this plan, recently began to blockade Bamut from both sides. In the first zone of the Ukrainian attempts to blockade the city, Barmut Northern Line is located and in the second zone, the southern line of the city. The Ukrainian Armed Forces is deploying as off special forces for encirclement attempts from the first district, namely the northern line of Barmut. Clashes here usually take place in areas close to the industrial area of Barmut. Since the Azov Regiment provides support to the Ukrainian forces in these areas, the Russian soldiers cannot be very effective in the first drill in Egeon, namely the northern line of Bahamut. For this reason, the Ukrainian Armed Forces manages to break through a 750-meter Russian line in the first region. Russia, on the other hand, is forced to withdraw from the northern line of Bahamut in order to maintain the tempo. They have captured and to trap the Russians in Bahamut from both directions. The Ukrainians are launching effective attacks from the northern part of the city as well as from the southern parts of Bahamut. This area, on the other hand, is referred to as the second region, which is included in the great offensive plans of the Ukrainian army. In the second region, which is the southern front line of Bahamut, there are soldiers of the 93rd Mechanized Brigade, one of the most valuable special units of Kiev, as well as Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainians are conducting joint military operations with the 93rd Mechanized Brigade in the second region to push the Russians towards the central front of Bahamut. These operations are actually much more violent than those on Bahamut Northern Line because the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine announced that these striking attempts yielded remarkable results. Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malyar announced that her army had made an advance of 1,000 meters after efforts in the southern region of Bahamut. Yevgeny Prigazin, the boss of the pro-Russian Wagner Group, also confirmed these statements. The Wagner leader reported that at the moment the situation in Bahamut is quite critical for the Russian forces and that the Ukrainians continue to break through the Russian positions. In short, the Ukrainian armed forces have squeezed the Russians from both the northern and southern directions of the Bahamut front line. Russian forces, which are almost besieged from both directions, are forced to either flee from most of the trenches in these areas or use the option to withdraw their defensive shields, but is fleeing or withdrawing the defensive line a way of salvation for the Russians? Maybe if we had been looking for the answer to this same question a few months ago, we would have said yes to you. But at the moment, Ukrainian forces are conducting support operations not only in Bahamut but also in the trench lines near the city. It is possible to witness these efforts of the Ukrainian army, especially in many of the logistics routes that can reach Bahamut. To see this much more clearly, let's first go to Kremova, which is 22 kilometers northwest of the city of Bahamut. In this region, the Ukrainian forces prevent the Russians from delivering additional military resources and supplies to Bahamut. The situation is the same in the city of Ivanivka, located southwest of Bahamut. Because here, too, the Ukrainian armed forces are trying to prevent the Russians from supporting Bahamut. It is also possible to talk about the presence of Wagner forces in the wooded areas of Ivanivka lately. For when the Wagner boss, Yevgeny Prigazin, threatened to withdraw his troops from Bahamut, some Wagner mercenaries were still actively conducting offensive operations in the city of Ivanivka. However, in this period when the Wagner group became stagnant, the units in the Ivanivka frontline did not carry out offensive activities. The Ukrainians had already taken control of the highway between Ivanivka and Bahamut. This situation paved the way for the logistical activities of the Ukrainian army to improve much more and for Kiev to provide military support to Bahamut.
In fact, if you've noticed, the attack plans that the Ukrainian army has prepared in recent days are like the links of an interconnected chain. Because Barmud attempts to cut off the connecting roads in both the northwest and southwest directions and the actions to blockade the city from both the north and the south show that the inconceivable offensive plans of the Ukrainian army are interconnected. The offensive plans of the Ukrainian army continue not only in these areas, but also in other front lines close to Bahamut. Looking at Solidar, we can see that it is 15 kilometers between the city and Bahamut. This short distance indicates that the Ukrainian forces could easily implement their offensive plans in Bahamut against Solder. In fact, the problem of the Russian army literally begins at this point. Yes, the distance between the front lines is the same for both armies. But the Ukrainians are not unfamiliar with the front lines and they are making good use of their logistical advantages. For this reason, we think that the distance of about 15 kilometers from Bahamut to Solder may be much longer for the Russians. In this way, Ukrainians can maintain their advantage in the region. So when will the gates of hell Barmut be completely closed for the Russians? To understand this much more clearly, we will have to look at the losses of the Russian army and the Wagner Group, the plans of the Ukrainians in the future and the impact of the current situation on the war. If we start with the Russian and Wagner losses in Barmut, we can see that the Wagner Group lost about 30,000 mercenaries in Barmut alone. According to international intelligence reports and the latest U.S. war data, the number of soldiers Russia lost only to Barmut is not clear. But some sources suggest that these figures are much higher than Wagner losses. International intelligence reports confirm this. In addition to the Russian and Wagner losses, if we come to the plans of the Ukrainians in the future, we should first consider the Western weapons in this regard. If you remember, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg announced that about 99% of the promised Western weapons reached the Ukraine army. However, Stoltenberg's statements do not include the newly sent M1 Abrams tanks by the USA, the recent military aid packages announced by France, and the military support that other countries are planning to provide to the Ukrainian army. With the provision of these aid packages to the Ukrainians in a short time, Russia's job in Barmut will be much more difficult. Yes, at the moment the Russian army can at least use options such as withdrawing trenches and defensive lines in Bahamut. However, with the military support we have mentioned reaching Ukraine, perhaps the Russians will not even have time to flee or withdraw their defensive lines. As a result, the Ukrainian army achieved an incredible rate of advance in Bahamut and on the front lines close to the city. Even Russian leader Vladimir Putin and Kremlin officials did not expect that the Ukrainians would make such advances in such a short period of time. If these great offensive operations of the Ukrainian armed forces continue to move in the same successful direction, the hell gates of Barmut for Russia may be closed forever, never to be opened again. In addition, the Russians may experience historical defeats on other front lines besides Barmut because Barmut is Putin's primary target for symbolic victory slogans. But Russia's military failure has attracted great attention since the first day of the war. Because before the occupation began, all countries were afraid of Russia's military power. For this reason, it was even thought that Zelensky would withdraw from the occupied regions in a very short time, and the Ukrainian army would suffer a great defeat. But everything developed in the opposite way. Russia's army of 2 million soldiers and a state-of-the-art equipment that Russia claimed to have before the war started were of no importance because for an army to succeed in war, its equipment or its soldiers are not as important as one might think. Of course, equipment and soldiers are one of the secrets in success in war, but they are valuable up to a certain point. Before this, the quality of what is possessed is important. With 2 million soldiers. Russia's biggest shortcoming was that it attempted to attack with unqualified soldiers. Putin made the biggest mistake by drafting hundreds of thousands of soldiers into the Russian army who had not completed their military training and were completely devoid of combat experience. In recent days, the Russian army has suffered a major setback and its losses continue to mount. Ukraine's attitude towards the army is quite different from Russia's. The number of inexperienced soldiers in the Ukrainian army is almost negligible. This is because the Ukrainian army started to work immediately after the occupation of Crimea in 2040. The soldiers in the Ukrainian army trained themselves with great determination to confront the Russian army occupying Crimea. 
The relentless and rigorous training gave the Ukrainian army a great advantage in the occupied territories. The Ukrainian army achieved great success against the Russian army. The determination and success of the Ukrainian army made those who follow the war closely realize something very important. It was not the number of soldiers in the army that mattered. It was the experience and training of those soldiers. Quantity was of no importance against quality, and the Ukrainian army proved this to everyone with an extraordinary success. The Ukrainian army conducts its operations in a very subtle and strategic manner. In this way, Ukrainian soldiers almost never suffer great losses in any attack, so much so that the Ukrainian army inflicts incredible losses on the Russian army and the attacks it organizes. Throughout the war, we have witnessed many operations that support the situation. Recently, there was another attack organized by the Ukrainian army, and this attack showed the experience of Ukrainian soldiers. The operation organized in the Donetsk region, where the conflict between Ukraine and Russia continues fiercely cornered the Russian army. Virtually every tactic of the Ukrainian army to trap the Russian army came to naught in this operation. The Ukrainian army opened a road for the Russian invaders. But this road was a big trap. The Ukrainian army created a road wide enough for the Russian invaders to advance, but not to turn back. The Ukrainian army aimed to open a road wide enough for the Russian army to return for possible attacks. And when the Russian invaders started to use this road, the operation of the Ukrainian soldiers started. The Russian soldiers who were hooked by the Ukrainian army started to use the road to attack Ukrainian soldiers. But the Russian invaders were unaware of the Ukrainian soldiers who were ambushed during the ambush. Ukrainian soldiers took with them the Javelin missile systems, which had been added to the inventory thanks to eight packages sent by the United States. The Javelin missile systems were the most important part of the Ukrainian army because these missile systems, which are practical, they can be carried by hand or used on the shoulders, but are also very effective, inflict enormous damage on the enemy. The missile caused huge explosions where it was fired. Therefore, tanks and armored vehicles were successfully destroyed by Javelin missile systems. Ukrainian soldiers who used Javelin missile systems for this attack waited for the best moment to fire the missiles. One Russian tank that approached the area soon increased to five. There were exactly five Russian tanks in the area where Ukrainian soldiers set up an ambush and the most suitable moment had come to fire the missile. Ukrainian soldiers fired first missile towards the target. After the first missile was fired, things started to heat up because the missile hit the target with a pinpoint hit. The operation, which was recorded thanks to the drones of the Ukrainian army, started successfully in the footage recorded by the drones. It was seen that the Russian invaders became anxious with the first missile. The remaining Russian tanks started to endeavor to turn back, but this effort was futile. The road opened by Ukrainian soldiers did not allow the Russian invaders to return because the road was only wide enough to move forward. Ukrainian soldiers fired the second and third missiles towards their targets, and these missiles successfully reached their targets. Three Russian invaders emerged from the exploded tanks, one of whom had difficulty walking. The remaining two invaders were doing their best to get away from the area. But this effort was meaningless because every step of the Russian invaders was followed by Ukrainian soldiers. This successful operation was organized by the Soldiers of the 36th Marine Separate Brigade of the Ukrainian Army. Soldiers of the 36th Marine Separate Brigade destroyed five Russian tanks with extraordinary success in just one attack. The 36th Marine Separate Brigade made the following statement about this attack. How the Javelin fighters of the 36th Separate Brigade of Marines named after real Admiral Mikhail Obolinsky burned Russian armored vehicles in Donetsk region is a real article. It is indeed very difficult to keep up with the successes achieved by the Ukrainian army because the Ukrainian soldiers continue their attacks without giving up. With great determination and stability in the strategic moves they implement result in great success. The biggest secret of the Ukrainian army which achieved such success against the Russian army, was its soldiers. Because all the Ukrainian soldiers have undergone very strict and important training, it was almost impossible for an army of experienced and experienced soldiers to lose. Therefore, the Russian army was unable to achieve any significant success since the beginning of the war. This situation caused the Russian army to fail to make progress and regress while the Ukrainian army was advancing rapidly. 
However, military aid to Ukraine is creating a great strength in the Ukrainian army. Russia, on the other hand, is supported by almost no country. Western aid to Ukraine continues unabated. Germany recently sent 18 Leopard 2 tanks to the Ukrainian army. In addition, Norway, Poland and Canada, which promised Leopard tanks, also kept their promises and delivered these tanks to the Ukrainian army. The statements made by Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov were also of critical importance. In his statements, Reznikov mentioned that the Ukrainian soldiers trained for the tanks sent by the USA and France were almost ready. He also announced that they expect at least two battalions of Leopard tanks by the end of April. It is also rumored that Ukrainian President Zelensky and the Ukrainian army are preparing for a very large attack plan, so much so that it is thought that the war will end with the implementation of this plan. War experts also make many statements on this issue. According to Oleg Sedeno, a Ukrainian military analyst, the Ukrainian army will overcome the region between Russia and Crimea and will come to Melitopol and the Sea of Azov via Zaporizhia. Zdenov also said the following about the Ukrainian army's grand plan. It will split the Russian troops in two and cut the supply lines to the troops for the rest in the direction of Crimea. Putin is backed into a corner and the Russian army is unable to prevent the Ukrainian army's successful offensive, so much so that Russian soldiers cannot even defend themselves in the occupied territories. Russian leader Vladimir Putin is stuck in a political dilemma these days due to his war policies, the aid of the USA and the West to Ukraine, and the sanctions against Russia are paralyzing the Russian army and people. In addition, while Putin cannot get what he wants from his powerful allies such as China and Belarus, the Kremlin and the Russian army are starting to heavily oppose Putin's war policies. There is another striking name at the target of the arrows of criticism rather than Putin, who has received much criticism for the unsuccessful Russian army's invasion of Ukraine. That name is Yevgeny Prigazin, leader of the Wagner Group, a longtime friend of Putin's. Prigazin is on the agenda, especially with the scandals in Bahamut and the bad course of his mercenary group. The Wagner leader believes that this bad situation happened because of the Russian Ministry of Defense was unable to provide sufficient support to the Wagner mercenary group. Shoigu, on the other hand, argues that Prigazin failed and the Wagner leader completely humiliated the Russian army. What happened between Putin? Prigazin and Shoigu deeply affects both the Russian administration and military chain and the situation on the Ukrainian front lines. Now we will continue with the latest critical developments in this devil's triangle because a former Russian commander suggested that these may third lead Ukraine to win the war at the moment. Let's move on to the details of this critical news. Former Russian commander Igor Gherkin has warned that Russian leader Putin faces the threat of a military revolt. Igor Gherkin claimed that Yevgeny Prigazin, the leader of the Wagner Group, threatened Putin. According to Gherkin, Prigazin wanted to intimidate Putin by announcing that he would withdraw his own mercenaries from Bahamut. It is clear that the call for the withdrawal of Wagner mercenaries from the front without Putin's permission is a military revolt. Considering the estrangement between Wagner leader Prigazin and the Russian defense minister, Shoigu Prigazin may also have to aim to make Russian leader Vladimir Putin do his will and to eliminate Shoigu. On the other hand, Igor Gherkin wrote that if the issue of supplying ammunition to the forces of the Wagner Group is not resolved, Prigazin openly blackmailing the military leadership of Russia, warned that he and his soldiers would leave his position in Bahamut. The former Russian commander also noted that Prigazin's withdrawal of troops ahead of Ukraine's counterattack expected this spring could have disastrous consequences for Russia. Gherkin added that Prigazin warned in a letter to Russian Defense Minister Sarjai Shoigu to withdraw his troops, but official sources have yet to confirm whether Prigazin gave this warning to Shoigu or whether the mercenary group was short of ammunition. Currently, as we mentioned, the critical situation between these two is still not resolved. Here, the serious problem between Shoigu and Prigazin increases the accuracy of the bets on the subject in question. Also, the Wagner leader joked this week that his troops would stop attacking Barmut to allow Ukrainian soldiers to show the city to American journalists. Now, this last act of Wagner leader Prigazin was the last straw after Prigazin's joking statement. This situation caused serious discussions in Russia. By the way, Gherkin reported that Prigazin had previously spoken extremely badly about both the Russian command and the Russian army as a whole.
In addition, Gherkin stressed last month that the dismissal of Prigazin is urgently needed. These attitudes of Gherkin reflected that Prigazin was dangerous to Russia and Putin. Already, Prigazin's political ambitions were hurting both Wagner and the Russian army. While this situation was beneficial for the Kiev administration, it was pushing the Russian leader Putin to seek other allies. Besides the political conflict, Igor Gherkin also made critical statements in operational areas. Gherkin noted that paramilitary mercenaries, together with Russian troops, should withdraw from the front lines for supply and reconstruction to be used in a more promising strategic direction to dominate the eastern region in Ukraine. The former Russian commander continued to make striking statements about the war. Gherkin emphasized that the Ukrainian forces, rather than the Russian side, were also quite successful in this war, and that the Ukrainian army had come a long way in the last period. Gherkin listed a number of Russia's failures in Ukraine, such as heavy losses near the Ukrainian city of Avdiivka. Here, the Ukrainians actually forced the Russian troops to retreat again, leaving part of the previously occupied positions. After the striking situation on this front line, Gherkin added that although the war in Bahmut continued, Ukraine made progress while Russia did not. In addition, Igor Gherkin pointed out that the summer campaign next month will be to the advantage of the Ukrainians since the Russian generals could practically do nothing in the winter and spring except to achieve some goals in the Donbass region. In fact, Gherkin was quite right about this because the sounds of victory began to echo in Ukraine and signals of possible attacks were being given. Critical statements came from the Ukrainian authorities on this issue. Ukraine's defense minister, Alexei Reznikov, said in a statement that the preparations for the counterattack had reached the final stage. In addition, Reznikov added that Ukrainian soldiers are trained to use weapons and military equipment sent by the Western allies. The military aid that Reznikov mentioned is perhaps the most important element for the Ukrainian army in this regard. Powers such as the USA, NATO, and the EU are working in cooperation. NATO allies and partner countries delivered more than 98% of the combat vehicles promised to Ukraine during the invasion and war by Russia. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg announced that along with more than 1550 armored vehicles, 230 tanks and other equipment, Kiev's allies are sending large amounts of ammunition to the Ukrainian army, as well as training and equipping more than nine new Ukrainian brigades. Stoltenberg told reporters in Brussels that these brigades would put Ukraine in a strong position to continue to retake the occupied territories. It is estimated that Ukraine's new brigades will consist of more than 30,000 soldiers, in addition to the new Ukrainian brigades. Some NATO partner countries, such as Sweden and Australia, also supplied armored vehicles to the Ukrainian army. As Ukraine prepares for a major counteroffensive expected in May, Ukraine's almost 100% military support may be decisive for the overall course of the battle. Given that Vladimir Putin's troops do not even have helmets to fight, the possibility of Russia attacking Ukraine in the coming days is also on the agenda. The head of British Friends of Ukraine, Dr. Stepan Stepaninko, argued that Russian troops would not be harmed by a major Russian offensive that is expected to launch in the next few weeks on Ukraine, with the aim of reclaiming the territories lost since the war began in February 2022. Dr. Stepan Stepaninko warned that young Russian recruits, despite being entrenched in the front lines, do not have the strength to fight. On the other hand, there is no doubt that Ukraine does not want to send its troops forward without adequate artillery and other support, as the Russians did, because Ukraine plays its cards much better than the Russians. The capture of all Russian-occupied territories is the ultimate goal for Ukraine. Ukrainians generally preferred to hide their route to reach these goals, but when the time came, Kiev didn't hesitate to give the signals of this before the finishing move and cause the morale of the Russian army to deteriorate. Therefore, the possibility of an unsuccessful attack does not seem to be in the routine of the Ukrainians at the moment, because, as many war analysts and veterans have pointed out, Ukraine is currently preparing a major offensive plan. And we can see the stages of this plan in a very short time. Thank you for watching us.